let's make a really easy dish good for the freezer good in the refrigerator for up to 10 days and it's a heat and serve one pot wonder almost one pot wonder actually two shepherd's pie is basically ground beef cooked up with some vegetables and a mashed potato crust there's lots of variations. A lot of them will call for mixed vegetables in with the ground beef. I'm not particularly fond of peas in the mixture because peas get a funny color on them. But here's what we're going to do. I have some ground chuck. It has the most flavor. And we're going to start browning that in a pan. While this is browning, the ground chuck is also an 80-20 mix. So that there's a nice balance of fat in it. While that's browning, I'm also going to put in some diced celery, onion, and carrot. That is going to make up for a lot of the mixed vegetables. And into that while it's browning, I'm going to add some garlic. I clean the garlic and I'm going to put it through a press because it's fast and easy. I go a little heavy handed on the garlic. You could leave it out, but I really like it. I must say a word also about the ground beef. The Irish, come St. Patrick's Day, really like to make this dish with ground lamb. If you want to make it with ground lamb, it's really good. I personally like domestic ground lamb and also ground lamb that you grind yourself. It's a lot less expensive and it's a lot better tasting. So now we have the beef with the celery, onion, and carrot. Because the beef has a bit of fat in it, I'm not going to add any. Now to take the place of the peas, I'm going to add a few chopped mushrooms. Cut the mushrooms in half, put them on a flat surface, and then slice them up. Those are done. I like to use a spatula to stir the beef around too as it's starting to brown and the spatula actually acts as a knife so you can kind of cut it in as you go. Now also while that's browning I like to add these are two small ones one large bay leaf or two small ones so that they can start releasing their flavors and I'm going to put in just a little sprinkling of some dried thyme, a little sprinkling of some rosemary, not even a teaspoon, but I'm going to crush that in my hand a little bit so that can start to soften up, and just a pinch of marjoram. Uh, marjoram is one of my favorites. Not as strong as oregano, but in that family, and it adds a really nice flavor. Then I have a little Spanish paprika. Doesn't really call for it, but I kind of like it. It adds another layer of flavor. And just a pinch. Don't go overboard with it, because a little bit too much of the smoked paprika is too much. So just a little bit of that. While this is browning, the mushrooms are gonna go in. And mix these up nicely. Mm, sure does smell good in here. This is turning out to be quite a few vegetables. You could keep the ratio more meat. I personally like more vegetables. So here's what we're going to do. While our ground beef and vegetables are browning up, I cut some russet potatoes. These are going to be for the mashed potato top. And what you want to do is peel them and then I like to cut them because I think it's faster into about a one inch chunk. Cover them with cold water and you should keep them covered with water as soon as you peel them so they don't turn dark. And also I'm going to take this to my other stove. I noticed that for some reason this ground beef didn't give off any fat. Well I need a little bit of fat to be able to make the sauce so I'm adding a couple ounces of butter to it. We'll let that melt and then we will come back and make the gravy that goes in this. It's really good. Really easy too this way. Alright, so now that this is nicely cut up, thanks to my little 
spatula here and the butter is melting and the carrots are softened along with the celery and the onion. What we're going to do is I'm going to dust this with a little bit of flour. Now I started with about a pound of ground beef. So I'm going to dust this with about a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. And I have half a stick of butter in there. And what we're going to do is mix this around and kind of cook that flour out a little bit. This is a fast way to make soups too. If you happen to have beef stock, beef broth in your refrigerator, which most don't, I don't even, then we're going to add just a little bit at a time some cold water to this and we're going to bring this up to a simmer. After that's fully incorporated and you have a nice mix on this and it seems to be thickening a little bit, then I'm going to add the other cup of water. And I think two cups is going to do it. I'm adding a healthy, well it's actually more like a tablespoon of this better than bouillon beef base in it. And this is my substitute for beef broth. Easier, takes less space, don't have to haul water. We're going to dissolve that in the water mix. Now I want to season it a little bit with a little bit of Worcestershire like maybe a tablespoon or so. I sort of like Worcestershire, so that's another one I go a little heavy on. And we're gonna season it with a little salt, a little fresh cracked pepper. And we're gonna cook this down some. Because the flour is in here, this needs to cook for about maybe, oh, five, seven minutes, something like that, because you wanna make sure that floury uh, taste is gone. And of course, we want to taste this along the way to make sure that we came up with something close. Yep, that's going to be good. This needs a little bit of tomato. Now, I didn't happen to have any tomato paste, but I did happen to have a lot of tomatoes that I can over the summer. So I'm going to add the tomato tomatoes, but you could use a tomato sauce. That would be just fine in here. Well, this thickened up quite nicely. And as you can see, kind of looks like a really thick chili. So what I'm going to do is put this into my oven proof casserole, which happens to be a little bit. I want this to cool before I put the potatoes on it. And I do want a nice layer of potatoes on the top. So for this size casserole with an inch or so of potatoes, I have a little bit left over. I'm going to make a little personal one, the chef's snack. This is what a pound of ground beef gets you. Well, it's mashed potato time to finish our shepherd's pie up. I have some nice steamy hot potatoes that are cooked till they're nice and soft. A potato masher. I love this potato masher. There's also the kind of the little squiggly one that works well too. And what I'm going to do is just start these just a little bit. And just to give them the first mash. Now, I don't know who doesn't like butter. The more butter the merrier. So I'm going to chunk this butter that has come up to room temperature it's about two ounces of butter and we're going to mix that in and because I want the salt to melt in there nicely I'm also going to add the salt in the beginning and the pepper. Mash it up. Make sure you get to the corners of the pot. I could be putting these in a bowl but it's really not necessary. Actually I like doing these in a pot because the pot retains the heat. We're going to stir it up. Then I'm going to add what is, usually I use straight cream, but this time I'm going to use some half cream and half milk. I buy the Hartzler Dairy Milk because I'm in Ohio and it's unbelievable awesome milk. 
It has a nice fat content. The cream on the top is so thick it's unbelievable. It is low heat pasteurized and it's not homogenized. I make my own half and half because I really like it a lot better. I didn't want to add cold uh, half and half to this because not in the very beginning because I needed that butter to melt first and I needed the potatoes to mash up first. Now I could be adding cheese to this. Anything. I think I'm going to add a little bit of Pecorino Romano because I just happen to have it out. However you could add cheddar would be wonderful. Swiss would be great. Calcanon potatoes. The potato, mashed potatoes with cabbage. Oh that would be heaven on top of these. Now to gild the lily. Let's add some grated pecorino. Now I don't need this anymore. But what I do want to do is mix in the cheese wall. Go around, fold the sides of the pot up into the middle. And now to put this on top of our ground beef and mushroom mixture. So the reason that I like this to cool a little bit is so that it sets up a little easier. Alright, how does that look? That is now oven ready. And I'm going to put this into a 400 oven so the potatoes get nice and golden for about 20 minutes. Everything's already cooked we just want to golden these potatoes up a little bit. I'll tell you what, that is one good casserole. Easy to make, it freezes well, keeps for a while in the refrigerator, and I do hope you try it. Enjoy it, share this video with your friends, and thanks for joining me.